Hello everyone! Welcome to Nadi Atmaji's YouTube channel! So in this episode, I'm taking you to the Victoria and Albert Museum. It is the world's largest museum of decorative art, applied art, and also design. It's housing more than 2 million permanent objects. Wow, what are you waiting for? Now, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button so you won't miss any video from Nadi Atmaji in London. Okay, let's go! This episode is really special because I have a special guest. Hey guys! So, what's nice your to name? You. My name is Annelise. You can call me Anel or Nellis. It's up to you. Yeah, Alice is a student in City University of London studying Master of International Journalism. And I'm Nadia Atmaji. I'm currently a student from UCL. I'm taking digital media. And we're going to roam around this huge, huge Victoria and Albert Museum. Stay tuned because we're going to take you through this amazing museum. The Victoria and Albert Museum, or known as VNA Museum, is located within the Museum District in South Kensington, London. The museum is neighboring with the Science Museum and the Natural History Museum. By the way, the Natural History Museum organized an ice ring attraction every year, and 2021 is going to be last year. I also have Natural History Museum video too, by the way, you should check that out. Now, let's focus on the V&A Museum, shall we? The V&A Museum covers 12.5 acres and comprises of 145 galleries. Its collection spans 5,000 years of art from ancient times to the present day from the cultures of Europe, North America, Asia, and North Africa. The Victoria and Albert Museum has its origin in the Great Exhibition of 1851, with which Henry Cole, the museum's first director, was involved in planning. Initially, it was known as the Museum of Manufactures. Nellis and I arrived at the Vienna Museum after lunchtime. We decided to enjoy cake and tea to fill up our tummy before our museum trip starts. And it turns out the cafe's interior was so luxurious. We loved it. We're going to start the exploration from the ground floor. I think it is the floor with most rooms. This one is the Japan or Toshiba Gallery. VNA Museum has been collecting Japanese art and design since it was founded and now holds one of the world's most comprehensive collections. These particular displays caught my attention. First, a suit of armor in Haramaki or belly wrapping style. Meanwhile, this is a superb incense burner or koro in Japanese. The VNA paid a Parisian dealer who owned the koro an astonishing sum of money for this. And then, this is a room of collection from China. For centuries, antiquarian interest in world architecture and sculpture led to reproductions or copies being made of outstanding national monuments and notable sculptures. When the museum was founded, it collected and displayed reproduction of great art and architecture from across the world. The aim is to offer objects for study and tell a complete story of the history of art and design. Since the first opening of the cast courts, these two enormous rooms 
and the reproductions they contain have continued to create unforgettable impression to the museum's visitors. Visitors would feel like they travel the world because these casts provided a fascinating glimpse into the marvels of European sculpture. One of the earliest major cast of Italian figure sculpture, Michelangelo's David, sets the tone for the scale and breadth of the objects to be found in the courts. David, which was constructed by the Florentine castmaker Clemente Papi in the 1850s, is more than 5 meters tall and was created from hundreds of pieces of a plaster mold taken directly from the original. Now, we move on to the second floor. One of the attractions is surely these iron works. Honestly, there are many rooms left unexplored, but we haven't got plenty of time. Now, we're heading to the third floor. Mirrors of this type became popular in 1800. This example show you various details of eagles and the leaf and uh, all of the materials were added to a basic circular mirror. This is the rustic civility, so it was signed and dated in 1833 and as you can see it's very very antique and it's beautiful too and you see the view of the house and we also have a view of people, babies here so are these paintings? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was signed and dated in 1851 and you see the, this is a spring flowers and it's actually painted by George Smith. Spanning five centuries, the Viennese fashion collection is one of the most comprehensive in the world. So this one is English tile dress. It was very popular back in the 80s. And as you see here, the fabric is coming from India. So apparently since long time ago, India has been really famous for its bright colors. And also the fabric is really competitive in terms of price. The gown is also really elegant and seems luxurious. And it's very popular not only in England, but also in Europe in general. Yeah. Do you want to wear this kind of dress, Annalise? Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be fun to pretend like an English royal. <laughs> of course. Yeah. The Viennese Museum Ceramics collections are unrivaled anywhere in the world. They encompass the history of fine ceramic production from about 2500 before a century to the present day.
Where are we now? We are in the ceramic section. Mm -hmm. So you can see this beautiful, beautiful plates and the teapot and ceramics. All of it in a very, very nice color. Where are those from? I think they're from Turkey, Iran, Middle East, a lot of different countries and a lot of uh, different region and they also have ceramics from Japan, Korea, Southeast Asia. So which uh, room is your favorite in this museum? I think my favorite room was the ceramics, so Southeast Asian ceramics. Mm -hmm. They're just beautiful and I think the design is looks so fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and which one is your favorite? My favorite room would be, I think, the medieval and renaissance room. Mm -hmm. I think the sculpture was really great and meticulous. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really imagine how those people actually sculpted this uh, statue back in uh, the old times. So yeah, I think it was amazing to yeah. see that in person. Yes, of course. <laughs> I love how they actually arranged the statues and sculptures in um, Maybe they organize it with certain aspect of historical aspect, I don't know, but it's really great. The v &A Museum also offers outdoor installations at the John Madeski Garden. It is known to many as the heart of the v &A Museum. Viewing the buildings around the garden, visitors are treated to a wealth of decorative ornamentation including terracotta modeling mosaic and tiles on each of the building's facades it was intentional so that their exteriors were as beautiful and as instructive as the collections within them now we're at the museum shop yes. what do you see this is the library diorama so it is really really pricey for me <laughs> because it costs like 450 pounds can you imagine but i know uh it is spicy but it is worth to buy for those who actually love about art yeah it's so detailed like this yeah look at that it's just uh, so beautiful this is the end of our video and it was really really nice don't forget to subscribe and comment below yes thank you for watching don't forget to turn on the notification button and see you on another video bye Mirrors of this type became popular in 19 and eh, salah 19. <laughs>